everybody. It's Angie, and I'm here with Dr. Scroggins. Thank you for being here, Dr. Scroggins. Happy to be here. And we are actually posting this video simultaneously in the women's group and in the men's group. And the reason we are doing that is because all of us have hormone problems. <laughs> Men and women, everyone has hormone issues, it seems like. Am, am I wrong? Yeah. 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 A lot um, of people do. So, <laughs> and I asked Dr. Scroggins to be here in this live tonight because he is my doctor. He is the one who has helped me uh, get my life back and um, be able to run my business and save my marriage. And he has also helped Brian with his hormones. And so we are actually just living our best life because of Bod HD and Dr. Scroggins and everything that they have shared with us. So I just wanted to bring him on here and I have some questions from the ladies about the Bod HD. And if you have questions, feel free to comment under this video and ask. Um, this is open forum and if you don't wanna ask it, on Facebook, you can always message me and I'll be more than happy to um, find the answer for you. So, so um, basically, hormones make us sick. What, yeah. what, what is, why is that? Uh, you know, in women in particular, um, you know, uh, hormonal imbalance plays a big role with a lot of symptoms women suffer with. A lot of women, you know, feel and, you know, they complain about to their friends maybe, uh, but they don't really seek medical attention for. So, you know, uh, imbalances of estrogen and progesterone as you get into your 30s and 40s and even earlier, you know, some women have problems when they're 20. Um, but uh, a lot of times the most common imbalance is going to be estrogen dominance and progesterone deficiency. Um, and that's going to cause problems with losing weight. It's just really hard to lose weight. No matter what you do, you're, you know, doing keto, you're working out five days a week. Um, you just don't understand why you're not losing weight. Um, so an imbalance of hormones plays a role with with weight for sure it's much easier to uh, lose weight when you are uh, balanced and optimized the way you're supposed to be I've been losing um, weight so you know that's very important and then also not sleeping well not having the energy um, those are signs of you know having problems with hormonal imbalance no sex drive uh, feeling anxious and uptight and just nervous and worried about stuff all the time uh, or depressed uh, mood you know instability that can be a big sign of hormonal imbalance in women um, also in men too but uh, mm -hmm. those are just some of the things that are associated with hormonal imbalance in women and, um, you know it's uh, definitely a game changer when you um, get your hormones balanced and and optimized to a youthful level to where things are supposed to be uh, it's amazing the changes you see. It's something that I've watched uh, in multiple women involved with BOT MD, including your wife, including my wife, and it's uh, it's saved our marriage for sure. You know, we were in a bad place um, related to well, hormonal imbalance, basically, uh, because of the you know the side effects associated with that, the the not sleeping, the you know not wanting to get up and do life, just not having to drive, just wanting to sleep all the time, and uh, no sex drive. Um, all those things. You know, we're uh, totally, you know, resolved within being on therapy in a few months. So, and getting balanced and where she needed to be. So yeah, it's, and all of those um, things that you said, I had every single one. Uh, like I was really suffering, and and I know Lisa's put her <clears throat> testimony out. Mm -hmm. Lisa's his wife, and you know she had the same thing. And you know, whenever you're trying to stay married and you're trying to raise your children and live your best life, and your hormones are messed up. It makes not only you, but everyone else around you absolutely miserable. True. And it can destroy <clears throat> your life, and it can yeah. destroy the, your way of life as well. Mm -hmm. um, I know that for certain, just, you know, me and my marriage and trying to run a business and my husband being in the Army and mm -hmm. raising three children. And, and now, you know, I was just talking to Dr. Scroggins as far as I'm on month five, and I can't put into words what the hormone therapies have done. Like because I've never felt this way before. I've always had from the time, I think from the time I hit puberty, my hormones were messed up. And so I've never in my life felt this way. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm a real human being now and I can function mm -hmm. like a real human being and I can have true, real relationships with people and I can sleep. Oh my God, do I sleep? <laughs> like last night, Brian woke me up this morning. He was like, wow, you must've been tired last night. And I was like, why? He's like, you never moved. Who does that? Who doesn't awesome. move when they sleep? Like I fell asleep. Awesome. 
or I woke up in the same way that I fell asleep. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I was tired, but, and I slept like nine hours last night. Used to, I'd get up at two in the morning, three in the morning, four in the morning, and he did too. And now we'll find ourselves on weekends and we're, we're like, oh my gosh, it's nine o'clock. I guess we should get out of bed if we want to. I mean, I don't know, you know, <laughs> which is great, well, yeah. which is great. <laughs> Yeah. Now, the ladies, they had a few questions because I had put out, I think it was yesterday or day before yesterday, that um, if anybody had any questions to, um, to, to let me know. And my friend Courtney, she is so sweet. She, um, she started almost two months ago, and she's loving it, and she just had some questions. She said, I'm in like week seven or eight-ish. Not sure the exact number. It is norm is it normal to go back and forth between feeling pretty good and then kind of backsliding a little at the beginning? At the beginning, it takes a little while to get optimized for sure. You know, usually about three months to really get optimized where you need to be. It takes your body a little time to you know, get the peak uh, estrogen and progesterone where they're supposed to be. And then also uh, to create those receptors uh, uh, that weren't there before to respond to the hormonal therapy. So. I see that a lot of times with progesterone, it takes a little longer to optimize somebody. Um, just because a lot of ladies that go on our hormone therapies are very progesterone deficient. Uh, perimenopausal, postmenopausal ladies that just don't have enough progesterone. So, And you need a lot of that whenever <clears throat> you're ovulating. Mm -hmm. So then the second part of that cycle where you're supposed to have a lot of progesterone, they just don't. So. It takes a little while for your body to get used to, okay, wow, you know, what am What's I supposed to do with this progesterone? <laughs> this is cool. Uh, but they don't have the receptors built up to respond to the hormone therapy like they're supposed to. And that's, it takes a little time to get it where it's supposed to be. And that happens over time. And, you know, um, sometimes we have to make adjustments, you know, uh, if somebody's, you know, really tired and on the first part of the cycle and they're just getting their estrogen, it's a smaller dose, you know, it's, this is, biorhythmic, you know, kind of physiologic restoration therapy. So it's designed to recreate the peaks and valleys of the hormones throughout the cycle. But, you know, it's easy for, you know, me as a physician to talk with my patient and identify areas where we can make a change to help them feel better. You know, I can bump their estrogen up on certain days when they're, you know, suffering with decreased energy on those days or... That's what happened with me with <clears> the <throat> estrogen. My, whenever I was doing just one click of estrogen, I was really, really tired. And so I reached out and I was like, hey, am I supposed to be this tired when I'm on this estrogen? Because I feel great when I'm on the progesterone. And he's like, no, let's bump you up on the estrogen a little bit. And I wanted to tell you, I did go back down and I'm feeling great. Mm -hmm. So it, it takes a little time. You know, after you get about three months in, uh, you know, then uh, those symptoms that are persistent, you know, I just need to make adjustments with you. Uh, look at your labs, talk with you about your symptoms, um, increase estrogen decrease progesterone vice versa just it's customized this is you know designed for you in particular it's not designed for you just know, everybody just everybody I mean it's uh, one patient's going to need more estrogen one's going to need less estrogen um, how you you know eat uh, how you exercise you know your lifestyle plays a big role in uh, how you respond to the, the hormones too so you know certain people are, like I say just going to need more estradiol than others um, yeah, I thought it, I got a, a message from OMD, I think yesterday, and they said it was time for my follow-up blood work because we do blood work every six months. And they said I was supposed to do the blood work on day 21 of my cycle. So I thought that was really interesting. Is there something, there's got to be something specific to that, is there? Yeah, 21 is just looking at the secondary estrogen peak and then also progesterone, kind of where it's peaking at. And, and I get a good picture of both of those on day 21. Day 12 tells me what your primary estrogen peak is, which is important information too. So I kind of like to see both, you know, and uh, I like to alternate between the two sometimes, or if I'm specifically wanting to see, you know, more of that secondary estrogen peak and progesterone peak, I'll ask for day 21. Uh, we like to do that when, you know, we go with our six month, you know, lab, um, kind of look at day 21, unless I specifically know, I, I would rather see a, a day 12 on somebody. But um, at some point we'll probably add the availability of doing both you know, men and women, it's another blood draw, you know, but it does give me a lot better information if I can see both of those values, they can help me adjust patients even better. Very cool. <clears throat> now, um, someone asked, does the hormone um, include a top, any type of estrogen, which yes, it does, estradiol, um, are they safe for individuals who are prone to blood clots? Yes, yeah, very safe for um, anybody when it comes to blood clots. The topical therapies are not associated with increased risk of uh, blood clots. So. 
Uh, you don't have to worry about it like you would a pill, you know, when you take your birth control pills, you're at increased risk of getting a blood clot. Or Premarin. Premarin, you know, mm -hmm. uh, all those, you know, uh, pills that you, your pharmaceuticals, most of the time you're at increased risk. When it comes to the transdermal bioidentical therapies, though, there's no increased risk of blood clots. So um, my wife's had a blood clot in the past. You know, she has had no issues whatsoever with the, with the therapies for a couple of years, and we don't anticipate her having any issues. So, um, but yeah, that's a good question. A lot of people ask that That's a great question. One. A lot of people have asked me that as well. And now, is there any health, and this is my question, is there any health benefits that you can think of off the top of your head other than the simple, um, you know, it's going to help you sleep better and balance your hormones and all of that, mm -hmm. you know, because we're talking about blood clots. What about Heart. breast cancer, mm -hmm. blood clots, mm -hmm. um, what else, heart disease? Yeah. Does it increase risk on any of that? Uh, estrogen is very, very important for heart health in women. So uh, it's, you know, when you go through menopause and you don't have estradiol, that's when you're at risk for developing coronary artery disease, having that heart attack or that stroke. It's not when you're, you know, younger and have plenty of estradiol. Estradiol has, um, you know, uh, good effects on the vasculature, so it decreases your cardiovascular risk. That's why women tend to have, you know, uh, problems with heart disease later in life in comparison to men. It's because of estrogen. You know, it uh, it has a protective effect on the on the blood on the vasculature, and it does decrease your risk. So, uh, estrogen is very important for heart health. That's very important for bone health. Um, I've seen ladies that were osteoporotic, came on therapy. Now they're not osteoporotic because oh, you know they've you know been on estradiol therapy. They're getting the good bone benefits yeah. from it, and progesterone is good for bones too. You know, both of them together, testosterone is good for bones. But going from you know having a negative four uh, you know, score on the bone mineral density test to you know back to like a negative two, you know, having wow. a significant increase in That's bone amazing. density associated with therapy. We've seen that in patients on our therapy. So um, hormones are important for bone health. They're important for heart health. Decreased risk for dementia. You know, if you uh, don't have your estradiol, uh, you're more likely to have dementia. Um, That's very interesting. There's yeah. so many people that have dementia. Very common for dementia patients. They're elderly. You know, they mm -hmm. haven't had hormones in years time. and years and years a lot of times. And there is a strong association there so um makes sense you know, it, it does make sense there's more receptors for estrogen in your brain than in your uterus and in your breast tissue so wow. that's very important for brain so if you too. starve your brain mm -hmm. of what it needs right. then it's so going to break estrogen is very important for serotonin uh, in the brain um and uh definitely plays a big role with mood too so which would make sense for depression mm -hmm. anxiety as well so you know Estrogen's huge for women. Uh, it, it plays a role in all kinds of chronic health disease processes. And it's very beneficial for, like I say, heart, brain, bone, um, of course, sexual health too, you know. Mm -hmm. um, when you don't have estradiol, you have dryness and pain associated with intercourse, and, you know, you miss out on the intimacy side of things with your, you know, husband, and Which that is can huge. cause relationship issues. Yeah. And um, so, you know, Hormones are very important for that. Not just estrogen, but progesterone too. You know, you, you want both, and you want them in a in a pattern. You know, you don't want progesterone all the time. You want it in the luteal phase of the cycle where you're supposed to have it. In that 28 day cycle. Mm -hmm. and estrogens every day, but it's a different amount. You know, it's you have a low point, and you kind of come up, and you go down, and you come up a little bit, and so you know that's the way biorhythmic or physiologic restoration dosing is supposed to be done and that's kind of a new concept for a lot of patients which makes sense i mean that's that what works, that's how god makes us mm -hmm. is on that cycle so mm -hmm. why not supplement yeah. on that cycle mm -hmm. someone was asking um what if you haven't had a hysterectomy or if you haven't gone through menopause if you have not had a hysterectomy and you have not or you went through menopause and, or, and you have not been, because oh. I see a lot of women, that's a good question, because I see a lot of women who, they haven't gone through menopause because they're young, um, mm -hmm. they haven't had a hysterectomy, but they're like, man, I really feel like my hormones are messed up. Yeah, you can still have an imbalance there. The most common one is going to be, say you're 35 to 45 years old, you're still having your cycle, it's fairly regular, but you're having a lot of these symptoms we're talking about. Uh, a lot of times there's an imbalance there. You know, it's an, usually an estrogen dominance issue. You know, that's what you're going to see most of the mm -hmm. time, uh, progesterone deficiency issue. And you can be both estrogen dominant but also estrogen deficient. 
which was the boat that my wife was in. She you know, was still having cycles. Um, she hadn't went through menopause yet, but she had symptoms of estrogen deficiency, although she had more estrogen than she did progesterone. So she was estrogen dominant, but she was estrogen deficient at the same time. So that's possible. Um, so wow. yes, I mean, a patient that's still, you know, is younger, perimenopausal, or even a 30 year old that's mm -hmm. not perimenopausal, just has estrogen dominance issues, we can help you know, balance the hormones out to where they're supposed to be and definitely improve quality of life in, you know, in that patient too. I met a young lady yesterday. She's 27 and she has hot flashes. I was like, bless your baby heart. Mm -hmm. So hopefully she will sign up for these as well. Someone asked a question up here. Um, does insurance cover this hormone treatment? Nope, uh, insurance won't cover uh, bioidentical uh, hormone therapy for women. Um, I don't think they ever will. It's uh, just something that's, that's going to be... It's, it's yeah. compounded is mm -hmm. what it is, and, and insurance mm -hmm. won't cover any compounded mm -hmm. um, um, right. prescriptions, no matter what it is. Yeah, yeah, they're just not going to cover that kind of stuff. Um, they're going to cover the you know, pharmaceutical you know, therapies that are synthetic and you know, not bioidentical, which uh, have shown in studies comparing the two, you know, the bioidenticals are safer, you know, when it comes to the E3N study over in France and, you know, there's a lot of big Danish studies, a lot of studies done overseas comparing, you know, bioidentical therapy versus synthetic therapies and you definitely want to go the bioidentical route looking at that data for sure when it comes to safety, breast cancer, you know, all that That's stuff. why I went on <clears throat> compound, even before I joined Bot HG, <clears throat> I had went on compounded um, um, therapies for the simple fact that Brian and I, I mean, we there wasn't anything in the US we had to like start researching Europe studies and stuff like that on because we were so desperate to find mm -hmm. out you know or to help me and they it, they just kept saying you need mm -hmm. bioidentical you need bioidentical don't do mm -hmm. the synthetic that it's terrible which I've heard for years that synthetic hormones were awful for you it just it never clicked in my brain that birth control is synthetic mm -hmm. uh, Premarin is synthetic all of the the pills are synthetic so they're yeah. not good for you no and the you know the studies that have been done in the u.s the women's health initiative i mean they used synthetic drugs they didn't use hormones they used synthetic drug you know it's, wow. it's not your estrogen it's not your progesterone that's what you know they say it is but it's synthetic it's not your human you know natural estrogen or progesterone so totally different type therapy so what is the bot mm. HD made of? Is it isn't it plant based? Yeah, it comes from decinogen. That's how it's made in the lab. It's designed to be, and that comes from like soy or, um, uh, gosh, sweet potatoes or you know those type things. It's a certain chemical within that. It's not made from those mm -hmm. plants, but a chemical within that that they can turn into you know these hormones, sex hormones, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone. All of it comes from that. Um, yes. And it's designed to be identical to your human estrogen, your human progesterone, your human testosterone, so that it binds receptors in the same way and creates the same actions. You know, when you have a synthetic uh, hormone, you know, it's, it's made synthetic in order to be patented a lot of times by pharmaceutical companies. So, you know, that's how they can, you know, patent something and make money off of it. But, by adding a methyl group here or a hydroxy group here, it's a different molecule. It's going to bind differently to the receptor. It's going to create a different action, and that's why you see increased risk of you know all those things like the heart attacks and strokes and breast cancer and endometrial cancer with synthetic progesterone in particular. In the Women's Health Initiative study done in the U.S. back in 2003, um, that's why it was so bad. It was, yeah. you know, it's not that wasn't natural progesterone. Mm -hmm. That was synthetic progesterone. So yeah, because that study is the one that you know. <clears throat> Especially in doctors' minds, oh, well, we can't, mm -hmm. we can't do yeah. estradiol or progesterone because there was this study, mm -hmm. and I, I, I don't think many are educated on the fact that this is synthetic and mm -hmm. this is not Different. synthetic. Yeah, and that's you know, a lot of docs when you know patients that are asking about this to the docs, I don't know what you're talking about. I wouldn't have known, mm -hmm. you know, before I got involved with body HD when a patient you know comes to see me and say, hey, I want to look at this bioidentical you know therapy. What do you think, doc? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Hormones are bad for well, you. Know, the Women's Health Initiative said they're bad for you. But that's, yes, that's true. But this is not the same stuff. You know, this is, this is natural, bioidentical, you know, designed to be your, your, you know, natural estrogen progesterone therapy, you know, that your body makes. Your body can't tell the difference, you know. Yeah. So, um, 
it's a totally different type of therapy and a lot of docs just have no idea what it is. It's not educated you know, on uh, it. I wasn't until, you know, two years ago. Because um, you kind of had to get educated on it because yeah. of your wife. <laughs> right, <laughs> You didn't right. have a choice. <laughs> you know, this got uh, sent to us. You know, I think God intervened and, mm -hmm. you know, sent it to us, um, you know, and got us involved very early in the process about HD, about MD, and, you know, uh, it's kind of pushed me in that uh, direction of learning more and you know I feel and it's got to be a labor of love too oh yeah it's uh, I love learning more about it and I love working with patients on this kind of stuff and um, very passionate about it not only hormones but the weight loss stuff, all the other sure. things that we do too but uh, it's it's been a blessing to be able to help a lot of folks now what is what if a woman has already been through menopause is mm -hmm. she done for can we help her yeah definitely help her no she's not done for um, I've got 70, 80, I don't know, I think 84, maybe it's my oldest patient. Um, so wow. yeah, um, seventies, awesome. eighties, sixties. I mean, it, people that have been postmenopausal for years, um, still benefit, um, you know, from going on therapies and they, you know, quality of life issues are better. Bones get stronger, you know, those type of things. It's always, it's best if you do this as you're making that transition, you know, if you can avoid menopause, you know, if you can avoid those changes that occur with menopause, the better you're going to do long term okay. because, you know, as you go through menopause, estrogen deficiency, progesterone deficiency, it's a, it's a chronic disease state. So, you know, the longer you go without, the more likely you're going to have heart disease, the more likely you're going to have all these problems associated with it. So if I can start, you know, women early, you know, that's even better. But you still can have benefit later on in life and, you know, especially quality of life issues. Um, and like I say, I've, I've seen lots of bone issues getting better and that type of thing too. So if a woman is, has, doesn't have a period anymore because she's, because of her hormones, mm -hmm. will she start her period again? Mm -hmm. Yep, going to start her cycle back. So say, you know, a patient's 60 years old and had a cycle, they had... You know, while well, they went through menopause, say at 45, 15 years, no cycle, um, they go on therapy with us and we get them back to the youthful, you know, hormonal levels, they're going to cycle again. You're going to start having that menstrual cycle again. We don't want it to be um, heavy. We don't want it to be any long or, you know, anything like that. It's designed, we want to optimize hormones and balance them in a way so that you have a regular cycle. It's not heavy. It's not painful. You don't cramp. You know, it, it occurs, you know, every 28 days, you know, or so, somewhere within a day or two of that. It lasts maybe three or four days, and, you know, you're kind of done. Um, it's a sign of youth, you know. Um, youthful, you know, ladies that have good hormones have cycles. So uh, if you still have a uterus, you know, it's going to respond to the estrogen. It's going to respond to the progesterone, and you're going to stimulate the lining, and it's going to slough off appropriately. So... Yeah, you know, you're going to start having a cycle. kind of wanted to do that because, so, I mean, that's healthy. It lets you know it's, you know, your body's responding to therapy. Mm -hmm. You know, your your breasts change, you know, instead of... Man, and know, that was really great. I'm you, just going to tell you all yeah, that. <laughs> definitely get a lot more fullness to your breast. And, you know, um, and ladies that hadn't had that in 20 years, you know, the breast mm -hmm. density changes. The way you hold your weight changes. Mm -hmm. That um, belly. Yeah. So It that, all goes all, to the belly. And you don't even know where it <laughs> came from because you didn't change anything. It's just there. Yeah. So it, you know, you go back to when you were 20, you know, it's, you hold weight like you did back then. And, you know, it's, uh, it puts you back to a youthful place. It's anti-aging type medicine, you know, it's. That's amazing. <clears throat> yeah. Absolutely amazing. Uh, Lisa did say that you can, and I forgot about that, you can use your uh, HSA or your oh, health yeah. savings account yeah. card yeah. with these therapies. Your insurance company just won't. Um, right. So if you have it. a health savings account set up with your like work or whatever, you pay into it, you know, you can use that for whatever. You can pay for your medicines with that if you have it set up, yeah. Um, Courtney says, I've had my gynecologist test for a hormone issue, and he says I'm fine. Will this test for something different or help out in other ways? It's a great question. Yeah, very good question. So it depends upon the timing of the test. You know, like we were talking about earlier, a day 12 test is going to tell me where you're, you know, at estrogens peaking at and in a young healthy female you know that's probably going to be like three maybe up to 500 kind of range um if it's a say a 150 or 125 then it's okay it's not optimized i mean it could be better um so you know that you can look at that uh, that way um if you test on the day 21 or your luteal phase right around the day 21 i can tell you you know what your progesterone is uh in comparison to the estradiol you know if it's Say your estradiol is uh, 
you know, 100 on day 21, that's not as good as it could be. Uh, our goal is about a 150 to 250 on day you know, 21 for women. Um, and progesterone, when you're on therapy, uh, I mean, when you're not on therapy, should be, I don't know, maybe 10, 15, up to 20, you know, kind of range. If you ovulate and you have good production of progesterone like you're supposed to, let's say it's a, you know, like a 1.5 and your, you know, estrogen's 100. That's not a very good ratio uh, of the two, so you're estrogen dominant, but you're also a little bit, you know, deficient in comparison to a young, healthy woman, mm -hmm. too. So, I mean, you can be in range and you know everything can be fine but that doesn't mean it can't be better yeah and let's talk about in range because mm -hmm. um my friend courtney that i was talking about earlier um she when she got tested her her estrogen was at a 53 mm -hmm. and her blood test said she's in range and her doctor says she's in range but when you or when it was uh, dr dixon that looked at it said oh no we're not where we need to be mm -hmm. she's because she was hot flashing mm -hmm. i mean she was having perimenopause what yeah. does in range mean because it seems like There's a lot huge, of women are told yeah you're in range you're fine yeah. same when thing it's not with the men case. you know i mean you got this huge range you know you could be a 250 or you could be a thousand fifty and you're in range if you're a 251 or you're a thousand forty nine you know you're oh. in range but that's a big difference yeah what, what does all that mean well, yeah, you're <laughs> i don't feel like any of that is in here, range <laughs> you know, or you're way up here you know you want to be the one on top right you want to be optimized <laughs> yes. you want to be the one way down here um so that's like you know like i say 53 is not a great estradiol it depends on the the timing of the test if that's a day one yeah i don't really i know think that was her her I don't know if it was 12 or 21, but it was a specific time during For 12 her. or 21, that's just not very good. I mean, it could definitely, it could be in range, but it's not, it could be so much better. So, especially if that patient's having hot flashes or yeah, high she, sweats she and was. You know, all these symptoms associated with hormonal imbalance and deficiency, she, you know, she'll you know, definitely benefit from, you know, getting where she needs to be. She's not having <laughs> any more hot flashes anymore, so that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, Courtney says, I'm tired all the time, excessive weight gain in a two year period. She was the one that was asking about um, hormones. I mean, that's definitely, I mean, I'm not the doctor, but <laughs> <laughs> I would say that would lean really heavy on yeah, hormones. Yeah, sure. I can definitely play bigger, you know, hormones, sexual hormones, and, you know, um, that doesn't really tell me, you know, at what point in life and that kind of stuff she is. I mean, yeah, you know, it, it definitely could be related to hormones for mm -hmm. sure, you know. There might be other things to look at, like thyroid issues as well, or adrenal issues. But and Miranda says you're an amazing physician, and I completely <laughs> agree, completely. Thanks, Miranda. Let's see. Oops. Um, let's see. Lisa, which is his wife, says they don't want to help you unless you're almost dead. <laughs> you are so right, because I went 13 years, and they were saying, "Well, you're not dead. You're in range," and I'm like, "But it's hot in here." <laughs> <laughs> Thought dead people were cold. Let's see. Susan yeah. says, oh, it won't let me hit the button. I can only see some of your uh, comment. Are you taking new patients and do you, and you do all the tests or do I need to, to go to another doctor? Um, I'll let yeah. you expl kind of explain how that works. Yeah, you sign up online um, and, uh, you know, uh, we're open in 28 states, I believe. So uh, you have access to... Like I cover Arkansas and Florida and I have Texas license coming up. So, um, tell me you're getting those, Kentucky soon. Soon. Good. Uh, that Oregon, makes me happy. Kentucky and California, um, are coming. Good. So, but yeah, um, I have a lot of people in Kentucky who are waiting on you. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll work on Hopefully get that done soon. But, yes. but yeah, um, anybody can, you know, sign up to be a patient. We do lab work so you don't have to go do lab somewhere else. So when you, you go online, you sign up. You, then we give you orders to go to lab. You go to Quest Lab or you go to LabCorp, depending on where you're at, you know. That's a lab um, close to you, too. Which one's close to you? You know, if Quest, you're in, if you're in Conway, um, if you're in Little Rock, LabCorp probably. Um, so it depends on where you're at. But we give you orders. You go to your lab work. Uh, then you meet with a physician, kind of mm -hmm. talk about your symptoms, talk about your lab work. Of course, you talk, talk with a nurse before you talk with a doc. But um, it's and a, everything's on you know i've done this before and so it's susan i can send you the link to to sign up everything is so easy like you don't have to go to dr scroggins office right um mm -hmm. which is one of the things that i love not that i don't want to see him because he's also my friend but 
Um, I talk to the nurse on, on the phone. I fill out all the paperwork online. I don't have to sit in there with a bunch, you know, doctor's office with sick people. Um, and then everything's done online except for going to the lab and getting your blood work. And you don't even need an appointment for that. You just walk in on the day that you're supposed to get your lab. So everything is so easy. I mean, it's easier than what I've done definitely for the last 13 years, but not having to actually go into a doctor's office is huge. And then with your membership, you also get the Wellvia app, which is amazing because it's an app that you, you if you get sick, not an emergency sick, but like UTI, flu, uh, cold, something like that, you pull that app up, you make an appointment with the doctor, you do a video chat with the doctor, he prescribes your medicines, boom, you go get it from the pharmacy, you're done don't have to go and get more sick right. at the doctor's office because you have that awesome I don't like going to the doctor uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't like going either <laughs> there's a bunch of sick people there a bunch yeah. of sick people that have been there right. all day and yeah. I don't want their germs so germs. yeah Susan message me and I will I will get the information to you that way we can get you signed up um, Robin wants to know costs and how to enroll um, I can send link out um, to whoever wants to enroll it's just a link you uh, fill out the information um, and you check out, you, or you pick out which membership that you want to do. If you're having hormone issues, you're going to want to do the Bod Elite. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't remember off the top of my head what the, is it, is it 247? 297. 297 that you pay. That pays, mm -hmm. pays for all your blood work, like for as long as you're on mm -hmm. therapies, right? Yeah. That's Every right. six months. Yeah. Um, that's or, also your first month yeah, of, of, of yeah. Bot HD too. So um, you don't have another charge until the next month, which is $99. So you pay $99 a month to be a member and you get that Wellvia app. You get access to the doctors. You get an OMD app where if you have a problem, an issue, you just click that app, type your message, mm -hmm. send it. They come back and say, la, 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 la. And then you also have, uh, I don't really say a lot, a lot, a lot, but um, then you also have Wellvia too, which is a lot. I mean, if you sit down and you think yeah. about it, $99 a month and you get all of that. It's nice, you know, yeah. Just that really service in itself is worth that, yes, yeah. And then therapies <clears throat> for women, which they have men's therapies too, which I wanted to talk about men here in a few minutes, which there's not a whole lot to talk about for men, unfortunately, but uh, women are get a little bit more complicated. But um, the hormone therapies are 159 a month, and that's for your estrogen, progesterone. And is it different if you if a lady has to take testosterone? Uh, no, price, um, or is it the on same? the plus, it's the same price. The now, same if price? they do premium, that's that's a bit more. So that adds other stuff like DHA, pregnant alone, vitamin D. So that one I don't recommend a lot of people start off with anyway. But that one's a bit more expensive. But okay. um, yeah, you could have the estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, all that stuff is one fifty nine a month. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean, to mm -hmm. have a completely different life and live your best life for ninety nine dollars a month plus one fifty nine a month. I mean, I can't think of anything else, not even food, that I would mm -hmm. want to spend my money on <laughs> to feel the way that I do right now, and for my husband to feel the way that he does. And us like get along and stuff. It's so crazy. Like we don't we don't even fight or anything. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't even ten understand. Times more than, you know, yeah, what, what we like I can't yeah. believe it's so cheap. <laughs> yep. Like I get to live this way for this little bit of money. This is available at other places, but it's much, much more expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, if and you, you gotta go it, into the doctor's mm -hmm. office, yes. and you don't get a well via app, and you don't get an app telling you when to put your yep. therapies on or anything mm -hmm. like that. So, and I know that this is a fraction of the cost of mm -hmm. oh yeah, because I've done that before, yeah. and it was very expensive. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, Lisa said, contact Angie and she'll fix you up. Yes, I will, girl. Yes, I will. Uh, let's see. Christy said, no more night sweats for me. Losing some fat, too. Yeah, Christy. Yeah. I hope you do, Courtney. Let's see. Uh, Courtney said she's 35. She's had a partial hysterectomy eight years ago. I've had thyroid and hormones checked out, but each time... It, let me see if it'll let me click on it. No, it's not letting me click on it. Yeah. But I'm I'm guessing that it says everything is in range or yeah. probably okay. So 35, had a hysterectomy eight years ago. Uh, still have ovaries intact, probably. Thyroid hormones. Yeah, you know, they're telling you you're in range, but like we were talking about, you might not be as good as you could be, you know. So if you have those labs and, you know, you want to share them through, you know, um, 
don't know, Angie or somebody, I can look at them for you at some point. Um, I do look at labs, you know, when other, you know, patients sign up and they want me to evaluate labs from, you know, their GYN or the PCP or whatever, I'll be happy to look at those and kind of interpret them. That's what he did, he did with mine too. I didn't, I already had labs because I think the labs have to be within 60 days or something like that. Yeah, um, if not, you want to do some new ones, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you got some pretty recent ones and they're decent labs, then you know you don't have to go get new lab work. So, yeah. Yeah, because mine were only like literally two weeks old because I, I gave up <laughs> the other place, unfortunately. Uh, Jess says this is awesome information. Would definitely be checking into this. Yes, do that, girl. Um, Christina says, I am so bad about not going to the doctor, but I so need to be checked out. I know I'm going through menopause. Oh, girl, if you're going through menopause, get with me. It's I'll send time, you some information yeah. because once you hit menopause, like you said, it's not that it's too late. It's just it may not work as well. Is that what you were kind of saying? Well, well, it's better to go and jump on it. You know, you just don't. I mean, why go through why menopause? Why go through menopause? Yeah, like, why, that's true. Why do that to yourself? Why torture I've, yourself? I've you done that. To. It's terrible. Um, but, yeah, yeah, the longer you go without, the more damage you're doing to your body for sure yeah definitely <clears throat> definitely um susan still has the link oh good 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 that's great hey courtney um yes jess uh send me a message and i will send you a message back with that um my husband keeps commenting <laughs> let's see Don't feel crazy, Courtney. And I understand what you're talking about on the crazy because I felt like I was crazy for 13 years. So do not feel like, and that's one thing hormones do. They make you feel like you're crazy. And then your doctor's like, well, you're in range. And you're like, does that mean I'm crazy? Because <laughs> something's wrong. Something's wrong. And I've heard that from so many women that they, they'll they say, hey, don't think I'm crazy, girl. I don't think you're crazy because. Been there. I've been there. I have been there. And, uh. Uh, Fred, yes, there is a discount for a husband and wife combo. There is a family plan. And tell me more about the family plan. Mm -hmm. Who does that cover? Oh, you're talking about through Wellvia board? Or well, the, through Wellvia oh, and the, okay. the BOD Elite. Bod I think Elite. it's plus. Yeah, um, you know, you add on your partner. Um, it's, I don't know if that's called plus or I guess it's called plus. Um, you sign up and then you add your partner basically um, at a discounted rate. So they pay. Was it like half? I think the power. You know, so you two ninety seven. They'll pay like one forty nine or something. It's I know it's, it's cheaper like one forty nine a month when there's when it's <sighs> yeah. the family plan versus nine, versus the ninety nine. Yeah, so and, it's and then it's like four ninety seven yeah. uh, to sign up with both people yeah. rather than two ninety seven. Right, so it saves you like a hundred bucks. Yeah, on sign up on join fees. It's say when you know husband and wife join together. You're saving a hundred bucks there, and then you're saving fifty dollars a month. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's cheaper. When it's you go cheaper to do the. And you don't have to be wife. husband and wife. You could be friends, you know, or you could be mom and son, or you could be whatever. I did not know that. Yeah. That's good Doesn't to matter. know. Okay. You, know, you can go in with somebody else, and that's fine. Friends, you know, it's like two girls that, you know, are just buddies. So it could buddies. be like a boyfriend girlfriend. Boyfriend don't girlfriend. Don't even have to live together, mm -hmm. stuff no. like that. Anybody can. You know, partner but it just can only be two. Yeah, just two. So if you have two more family members, you'll need to do another plan. Right. Okay. I did not know that. Yeah. Thank you. And then with well be on those, you know, you get five family members covered per and if you had, you know, husband, wife, then you'd have or two people, you'd have ten people covered on your well via. So, you know, that's like the kids or your mom and dad or, you know, whatever you want to put that's on. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so. that's good to know. And gosh, that that even so makes it like I mean, I thought it was inexpensive before, but now mm. I'm like, that's really inexpensive because you think about insuring people that don't even live in your house. Number one, you can't. Um, but, but number two, think about how many different insurance policies that would be. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, so it's, yeah. Or prescription on, plans or you can whatever. You cover the whole family for sure, especially if you got, uh, you know, two people. You know, that's Because you're covering awesome. 10 folks on Wellvia with that. But, so yeah. let's talk mm. about men. Yep. Because I know men are... Nothing like women. No. And neither are there women. <laughs> Men are very simple <laughs> beings. We are very simple in comparison to women. Uh, women, uh, definitely more complicated when it comes to hormones. You know, they have these peaks and valleys throughout their menstrual cycle. You know, they're on this, you know, very detailed 28-day cycle. Men, you know, we just have a daily, 
you know, 24 hour cycle. cycle. You know, typically, we're higher in the mornings, lower in the evenings. God, um, you are so simple. We're just right? simple. I mean, guys are easy. <laughs> you just um, basically, when you're low, you know, you don't feel well and you replace it. And they, you know, it's, it's not, there's not a, a lot of customization a lot of times with men versus women. You know, you just get their testosterone up and they feel a ton better. But, you know, for men that are, you know, not as energetic as they used to be, you know, you, you go to work, you want to come on, pop on the couch and just, you know, veg out and watch TV and go to bed and don't want to wake up in the morning, don't have that drive to, you know, go hunt like you used to do or go to the gym like you used to do or go out and ride the bike like you used to do or, you know, any of the stuff you used to do when you were younger, you know, you just kind of don't have the energy for it anymore. Your T's probably low. It's, it's probably half what it used to be. And I think a lot of men think, oh, you know, well, if my testosterone was low, then I would be impotent, or that means that I'm impotent, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily. I mean, you I can haven't still... seen that in my man. <laughs> no, you can, you can still have good erection quality and not have much testosterone. So, um, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean you have a problem, you know, but if you do have erection issues, yeah, you know, you could have a problem. Um, what because, about moodiness in men? Uh, yeah, Will it cause them to be sure. moody? depressed, moody, anxious, you know, the same with women when they're deficient and imbalanced, you know, they have those mood side effects, men too, you know, when you don't have as much testosterone, you're more likely to be depressed, uh, you can have anxiety issues as well, you know, some guys suffer with that, and that gets much better when the testosterone gets better, I would say more guys have more depression issues than anxiety issues, in comparison to women have more anxiety than depression, but um, that's what I see, and yeah, it, it, you know, when you're low, it definitely can adversely affect your mood for sure. Energy levels, erection quality, you know, just libido in general. You know, you when you were 20, you know, you thought about it all the time. You you know, you were good to go every day. But <clears throat> you know, if you're just not interested as much as you used to be, uh, you could go with or without intimacy with your wife. You know, there there might be an issue there. You might want to check that out and see you know see where levels are. Um, Holding on a lot more body fat than you used to, you know, not able yeah, to maintain. Yeah, man, get that dad bod. Dad bod, get the belly kind of poking out and, you know, get the saggy kind of chest and arms are, you know, a lot smaller than they used to be, not, not as much muscle, not as much strength and tone as there used to be. I mean, testosterone is huge with that. So. And, you know, I was noticing before we went on the therapies that, that Brian was getting, like, the dad bod. The dad and I was bod. like, oh, that is so cute. We're getting <laughs> old together. This is great. And now that we're on our therapies, I'm like, dang, babe, you're all cut and stuff. It's looking hot. <laughs> Awesome. Yes. Yeah, testosterone is huge for that. And Lisa says, what about men that had prostate cancer? Yeah, men that have prostate cancer can be on testosterone therapy. A lot of men that um, have had prostate cancer are on therapy. Uh, and we do help guys with prostate cancer through BotMD. I'm comfortable treating those type patients. Um, so it kind of depends upon who you talk to as far as which physician you're working with. But uh, there are a lot of studies that have been done uh, by you know urologists in you know, patients that had prostate cancer, they were treated, you know, with prostatectomy or you know, radiation pellets or whatever kind of treatment they had, and, you know, they were cleared, and then they go on testosterone therapy. There's no increased risk of recurrent uh, cancer issues in those patients, or even in those patients that had prostate cancer with watchful waiting, like, they know they have it, they're just not doing anything about it, but they still go on testosterone therapy. They're not seeing progression of that in that patient population on testosterone therapy. So there's a lot of good literature out there and available and you know it's very easy to find um, if you want to look out for that stuff on your own. Dr. Abraham Morgan Taylor is huge uh, Harvard you know urologist that does a lot of studies with those type patients. But when it comes to prostate cancer, testosterone is not your not a bad player for sure. Um, there's a lot of myths about that out there. Uh, a lot of docs are even you know in that school of thought they're definitely not up to date on medical literature because there's no medical literature showing that there's any increased risk of prostate cancer with testosterone therapy. That's, you know, that's just false. Uh, testosterone's um, very beneficial. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, myths when it comes to cardiovascular health and testosterone too, because there was a, a flawed study in 2011 that showed some issues uh, when you look at the math. And, you know, there was a, you know, a lot of urologists called for retraction to that study. Um, I think it was in JAMA, but uh, basically it was just a you know very poor 
really uh, does, you know, study. When they look at the real numbers, uh, actually showed a decreased cardiovascular risk versus increased risk. And there's a lot of good studies now that have been done since then showing, you know, men that have low testosterone versus men that have low testosterone getting treatment. The guys getting treatment and getting optimal treatment, those guys have much less risk of having a heart attack or a stroke or even dying wow. uh, from anything. So mortality rates decrease, you know, heart attack rates decrease when they have optimized testosterone. There's even a group of patients that you know are optimized versus they're treated and not optimized versus no treatment you definitely want to be optimized um, because that's that's where you get the real benefits of you know testosterone and you see all these decrease you know risk of diabetes and heart disease and all these you know horrible chronic disease processes that you know we see in older men but but yeah testosterone's definitely got a you know bad rap when it comes to cardiovascular and prostate but there's just there's not anything out there to you know support that in the literature it's it's actually the opposite so I would just you know and of course I'm not a doctor but I would think that it would be opposite for the simple fact that and I've heard this from another doctor saying that if a man lives long enough he's 100% gonna get prostate mm -hmm. cancer which makes me think okay well if our hormones start declining as time goes on and as he gets older if he gets to a certain point and he's going to get prostate cancer, could that be because of those declining mm. hormones and testosterone? Yeah, there's studies showing the guys that have the worst prostate cancers have the lowest testosterone levels. See, that makes so, total sense to me. Yeah. Total yeah. sense. Do we know what's causing it for sure? Not 100%, but xenoestrogens, those play a big role. So if you're a guy, quit drinking out of plastic. You know, quit uh, eating out of Tupperware and... Uh, you know, that'll definitely decrease your risk. Quit using deodorants with aluminum and those type of things in them, you know, because that's a metalloestrogen. Um, but you want to decrease your exposure to some of these chemicals we're getting exposed to in the modern world that we didn't use to. Um, that's probably the real, you know, bad player when it comes to, you know, a lot of cancers. <clears throat> Interesting. And Fred said um, that he's, what if you're already on a testosterone treatment? And the only thing I can say about that is that whenever I was getting treated for my um, hormone issues somewhere else other than Bot HD, Brian was also getting treated um, for his, his testosterone treated um, at that same place. And we both switched to Bot HD. Um, I feel like our level of care has been a thousand times better. Um, I feel like the, the medicines that we're getting are a thousand times better. Um, and I feel like Dr. Scroggins really and truly knows what he's talking about. And I didn't feel that way with the other places that I'd went to in the past. I felt like kind of like I was their guinea pig, um, where I don't feel like I'm his guinea pig. <laughs> he's like, here, you do this, you feel better. Okay. And I do. <laughs> so that's... That's yeah. my thought on it. Yeah. So, but yeah, if you're on therapy, you can switch over. You know, there's no problems with that. I got a lot of guys that switch. You know, that were on, you know, therapy from their primary care doctor. You know, versus guys that were doing doing the, like the one of these low T clinics or whatever. Um, it's very convenient for a man to do it this way because, mm -hmm. you know, you're you're getting treatment. You're doing treatment at your own home. You're not having to go to the doctor's office every week or every couple of weeks mm -hmm. to do your injection, you know, so that saves you copays. It saves you time. It saves you money. And um, your prescriptions are shipped straight to your mm -hmm. door. So there's no picking them up. We were driving all the way to Cersei to get ours. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's, um, if you, you know, travel, you work, it's just hard to, mm -hmm. oh, I got to go to the doctor on Thursdays at, you know, three o'clock every week and I'll be there for an hour. Um, that's Hope tough. that's okay with you. Boss. I couldn't do that. Yeah, you know, but not in a business. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's nice that uh, you know I can you know teach you how to do your own injections, let you do your own injections at home, and provide you with a, a better product. A lot of times, than what you're getting because you know you want to use a food grade oil with your testosterone uh, CPN8 versus a cottonseed, which is you know what most prescriptions are made from. Uh, it's thicker. It uh, you know you have you're on the risk of getting exposed to pesticides in the you know cotton. Uh, the mm -hmm. cotton seed, you know, yeah. um, so it's just not as clean of a product. You're more likely to have a reaction to it, um, that type of, type of thing. So uh, we use either sesame or grapeseed oil, food grade oil, thinner, safer, um, and we do injections twice a week, lower dose more often, so you get less of the negative metabolites of testosterone like DHT or estrogen. 
and you get more of the good stuff. You get more free testosterone, so you get more benefit and less risk. Uh, you can't really do that at the doctor's office because you got to go twice a week, you know, do your shot, and nobody's going to do that. So if you're doing it at home by yourself, you know, you can do that, or your wife's getting your shot or whatever it is. Um, it's just a lot easier to do that. Um, and plus, you know, you want that natural uh, testosterone production to continue, you know. You don't want to just give that up um, mm -hmm. because say five years from now you can't afford to do the therapies anymore and you know you want your testicles to actually be able to function at that point so ACG helps keep those testicles functioning and making some natural testosterone um, so that's a supplement into the testosterone therapy you're getting so you're getting your natural plus you're getting a supplement you know um, and that's gonna put you at a youthful level you want to be youthful you want to be at that high end of the range. You, you want to be that guy that's, you know, 1100. You don't want to be the guy that's 250. Um, mm. you, know, you, you know, a lot of guys have I've symptoms. I've met that guy before. Yeah, and <laughs> even if they're, you know, 500, you know, that's, still okay. that's not, you know, not as good as it could be. You know, um, you could be much better for sure. Um, I think that's where, I think <clears throat> that's about where one clinic had Bron out, Bron out, and mm. he wasn't, ecstatic they're like oh you're in range it's good yeah on a lot of you know clinics um you know they'll they'll get you a little bit but not enough to really optimize you to make you you know where you are when you're 20 you know they are okay with you being a five six hundred seven hundred maybe but they're definitely not wanting you to be back like you were when you were young you know mm -hmm. and, and in your 20s and optimize around a thousand you know which there's no data to say that's bad for you you know okay it's you know uh, definitely a good thing to be optimized and youthful so mm -hmm. we like it a lot definitely like, we have so <laughs> much energy and it's insane it's it I can't even put it into words how we how different I know I feel and how much our relationship has changed and how much just my life has changed like even just getting up in the morning and going about my daily life it's just so different now than before when I was stressed out and I was high anxiety, high depression, um, couldn't handle the stress of three businesses and then having to deal with a home and animals and husband and he's got testosterone issues and <laughs> you know, it, it was just maddening. And now it's like, everything's cool. You know, it's, you know, I mean, still life happens, things happen, but you know, we're able to deal with it better now. So, um, Oh, Brian and Lisa are talking on there. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> well, if nobody else has any questions, do you have anything else that you think we might have missed or need no, to? No, I mean, we covered the hormones for men and women pretty well, um, even details about the memberships and stuff. Um, we do weight loss therapy. Oh, yeah, um, we do. We do yeah. offer that for patients. So, um, you know, I, I say the base of BotMD is hormone optimization therapy. Uh, but we do have other therapies like weight loss therapy, vitamin therapies, antioxidant Love therapies, the vitamin therapies. Uh, sexual health therapies. So, I mean, there's a lot of other stuff that BotMD is doing, and we're going to do more over time. So we're we're still, you know, building that foundation. We're gonna we're gonna branch out, and we're gonna do thyroid health. We're gonna do adrenal health. We're gonna do a lot more over time. But that's awesome. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. I knew about uh, the new product that we're that we're launching very 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 soon. It's yeah. called Glow. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. Yes. Everybody's going to love that it's for gonna sure. It's going to be great, which can't tell you about it yet. Y'all have to wait. <laughs> Me and Brian are going to tell y'all about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, y'all have a great night, and thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, um, if after if you're not on here live, if you're watching a replay, um, make sure to hit re replay for sure. But um, if you have any questions, feel free to message me. If I don't know the answer, I'll reach out to either Lisa or Dr. Scroggins and, and get an answer for you. Um, and I just hope you all have a good night. And I hope you optimize your hormones and feel like I do and feel like Dr. Scroggins does and my husband and and his, his, his wife, Lisa, and all that good stuff. So y'all have a wonderful night. Thank you for watching. Thanks. Bye.